our position on uh, Minsk uh, agreements uh, and generally on the situation on the uh, southeast uh, of Ukraine is the same. And uh, it is that it is only possible to overcome the domestic crisis in Ukraine by fulfilling uh, consistently and consecutively uh, the uh, Minsk arrangements. They are called uh, complex pack or rather package of measures and uh, they have the blessing uh, in the form of the resolution of the Security Council of the United Nations, such becoming a part of international law. Uh, and the success of the Ukrainian crisis can be between the parties to the conflict, which are, according to the Minsk documents, Kiev, Donetsk, and Lugansk. And uh, we have been continuously urging the United States, France, Germany, and other Western colleagues uh, that have influence on Kiev and decisive influence on Kiev to compel it to strictly abide by the Minsk arrangements. Question, Anna, but I, I really, I, I'm not sure that Australian colleagues do really uh, understand what is it all about because Minsk arrangements are never or almost never mentioned in uh, the Australian press or statements. As a, in a way of uh, some explaining, uh, there is a, uh, by the West, uh, some part of the uh, Ukrainian population, mostly Russian speaking, uh, choose not to accept these developments and uh, they choose not to live under a xenophobic uh, government that was threatening their identity and uh, their in fact uh, they, 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 they safety safety uh, so uh, Crimea as you know reunited with uh, Russia and uh, some regions in the east of Ukraine declared their independence. I mean Donbass, uh, Donetsk and Lugansk. And uh, as a, a reaction, Kiev unleashed a civil war against Donbass. And the Minsk agreements, uh, Minsk package of measures is in fact the way to settle this internal conflict to bring Ukraine to peace, stability and security. And uh, they, they provide for a negotiated special status for Donbass, making sure the rights of its residents are respected. And uh, ever since, in fact, Kiev, in connivance with the West, has been trying to get rid of Minsk agreements and to suppress Donbass by force. Uh, President Zelensky, by the way, is on the record uh, saying in August last year that ethnic Russians should get out of the country. Of course, it has never been covered here, so I'm sorry for probably being a little bit, uh, for, for a little bit uh, detailed uh, reply, but it's is a, in a way of explainer. We never 
show disrespect to sovereignty of Ukraine. In fact, uh, we should go, if you permit, uh, go uh, some way back to in history. I said um, Donetsk and Lugansk uh, declared independence. They had referendum uh, held there. It was a uh, will of the population to separate themselves from Ukraine. Minsk agreements that has been reached after some uh, time, and not without Russia explaining to, to uh, those, uh, to the leaders of those regions, that uh, the best way for them would be to stay in, in, inside Ukraine if their rights would be uh, respected. And we had this, and they agreed, and we had this uh, package of measures, and uh, it was signed and supported uh, uh, by the West. And uh, nobody uh, is uh, wanting to renegotiate it. Nobody in the West, not the US, not France, not Germany, are saying that it is not right. But when we come to uh, implementing this package, which is to ensure territorial integrity, sovereignty of Ukraine, and uh, exist uh, existence of Ukraine as a modern, not xenophobic, uh, state where cultural and linguistic rights of the populations are respected, uh, then we see that Kyiv does not uh, implement it. And the, the uh, Western partners don't want to compel it to do so. Uh, our minister uh, Lavrov went to the parliament uh, two days ago, and uh, he said, absolutely, our position is the same. We support Minsk's arrangements. We want them implemented. We want uh, a special status for these regions inside Ukraine. That's the position of, of the Russian government. But I must say that uh, as I said, it has been sabotaged for years, since 2015, by the Kyiv government. And when uh, the Western uh, countries now, including Australia, are expressing their support, either verbally or in material terms, or say by sending uh, arms, uh, to, uh, to Ukraine, they uh, embolden Kyiv to continue their line of sabotage uh, to not implementing the decision supported by the uh, United Nations Security Council. That's why we think that such expressions of support are very dangerous because they lead to uh, provocations, they lead to war. There is no aggression because our troops are on our territory. Okay, is that okay? Uh, sign of, you say, preparation for aggression. No, it, it, it does not uh, uh, coincide with the view of international law. Every, <laughs> every state has every right to place troops on its territory whenever uh, uh, and wherever it wishes. It's a sovereign right threat. So no aggression. Please take note of this when you write reports. No aggression. You cannot say there is a Russian aggression. Okay. You say it's a, th a threat. Um, you say it's a threat of invasion. I 
challenge you to stay on the positions of just common sense. Uh, and then if we stay on these positions, uh, we would understand that it's a funny way to prepare an invasion, to gather troops on the border and kind of let them sit there for, for months. For how, how long have you been uh, writing about Russian troops, 100,000 plus troops? For weeks, maybe months. Well, why are Let's come again to February 14. Then there, was a, there were protests in Ukraine against the president of that time, Mr. Yanukovych. Uh, um, US officials were coming to the barricades and uh, offering uh, biscuits to the protesters. Who, who was it? Uh, who was that U.S. official? Uh, Nuland. Nuland. Yeah, it was Victoria Nuland, who was. You, you are getting off topic. No, 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 no. Let me start. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I will explain. I'm now coming to it. And then uh, Nuland was uh, giving her uh, biscuits. U.S. was pressurizing Yanukovych not to use force uh, against the protesters, and. Uh, um, ministers of foreign affairs of, it seems, Poland and uh, Germany came and signed agreement with Yanukovych about this collation, about settling this uh, internal conflict. And it said that Yanukovych should not use force. The next day, Yanukovych was overthrown. And our Western partner said, oops, what could we do? And I'm, now I'm coming to, to exactly the situation on the border. We, as responsible people, could not afford having Donbass suppressed militarily by Ukrainian government, Minsk arrangements destroyed, and our Western partners saying next time, oops, we cannot afford ethnic cleansing just across our border. Our troops are not a threat. They are a warning to Ukraine not to try any reckless military adventures, not to interpret the support they have from the West as uh, carte blanche to do such crazy things. It is not a warning to NATO. When um, I would like you to understand there is two separate things. They are, of course, linked, but uh, it's not about NATO. Yes, against destroying the peace process the uh, set uh, in the Minsk agreements and against trying to resolve the internal conflict in Ukraine militarily. It's a war against this variant. For Russia, it's, it's what we are dealing now. It's our problem. And uh, we are very much concerned when people from thousands of miles away are fanning the, the uh, hysteria and fanning tensions. I don't think it's the right, the right thing to do.